In this presentation, we're going to talk about debugging. Debugging is the process of identifying and removing errors from computer hardware or software. Here's a quote from Edgar Dijkstra, one of the founding fathers of modern computer programming languages. If debugging is the process of removing bugs, then programming must be the process of putting them in. There are two types of errors we'll talk about today, syntax errors and semantic errors. Syntax errors occur when the set of rules for the programming language that determine whether the statements are correctly formulated are broken. You can think of this kind of like grammar for a spoken language like English or Spanish. If you break the grammar rules, then it will be difficult for other people to understand you. So there are programming language rules for App Inventor, and when we broke those rules, that causes a syntax error. There are also semantic errors, which occur when the program doesn't behave as it was intended. So when you're writing your programs, you have an idea of how it's supposed to behave when somebody clicks on a button or touches a canvas. And if it doesn't behave that way, then that's a semantic error. Let's take a look at each of these types of errors in more detail. So a syntax error occurs when those syntax rules are broken, and it can be detected by the compiler for that programming language. In um, usually an app error message will be provided. In App Inventor, in the blocks window, you should see in the lower left-hand corner this little um, area where you have the Show Warnings button, and then you have the yellow triangle and the red triangle with numbers beside them. And that'll indicate to you how many warnings and errors you have in your program. If you click the Show Warnings button, then you'll see the yellow triangles appear in your blocks, and you can click on them for more information about warnings. The red triangles on the error are the errors, and they automatically appear. So in the if-then code block that you see on the screen, you can see that there's a red triangle next to the get start x uh, block. That means that there's an error there. And if you click on the red triangle, you'll see that there's a pop-up message that shows up. So in this case, it says select a valid item in the drop-down. So that's supposed to help you debug the error and figure out why it's wrong. In this case, it's not a valid item because the start x variable is in a different procedure and it's not valid to be using it in this block of code. Here's another example of a syntax error. So you might have had this happen to you before when using App Inventor, where you've tried to snap two blocks together and App, App Inventor wouldn't allow you to do that. That usually means that you've got the wrong type of data in there. So this is the Canvas Touched event from the Paint Pot app. And if you look at the Draw Circle procedure, you see that one of the parameters is R for radius. And um, if you put it, tried to put a text block in there, it would not snap in. So the R for radius is expecting a numeric value to indicate how wide the circle should be. And so it cannot take that text value of 5 and convert it into a number to use for the radius. So it won't allow you to snap it together. And that would be another example of a syntax error. Semantic errors, then, are syntactically correct code, so they're blocks that are snapped together just fine, but they don't do what the programmer intended, which you wanted the program to do when you were, or the app to do when you were writing it. Uh, semantic errors can't be detected by the compiler because only the programmer knows what it wants the program to do. The compiler doesn't know what the program is supposed to do. Debugging semantic errors requires then that you know how the program is supposed to behave. This is why it's important for you to go through the planning process and think about what are your events and what's supposed to happen during each of the, those events and what are the different interface components you'll have in order to trigger those events. Here's an example of a semantic error from the Paint Pot app. So we have our three buttons, red, blue, and green, and when the user clicks them, it's supposed to change the color of the pink color of the canvas. And you would think that when the button, uh, the red button is clicked, it should change the pink color to red. However, in the blocks that are shown here, you can see that it changes the pink color to blue. Same thing with the blue button, it changes it to green, and so on. So these are all semantic errors, where the code is correct, but it doesn't behave as it was intended. So now when a user clicks the red button, they're going to get blue dots or blue lines instead of red ones. It doesn't behave the way it should. 
Here's another example of a semantic error. And this is an example of a loop that might do a countdown. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, that sort of countdown. And it would change a label on the screen to display the current number. When you look at the loop, however, you can see it starts at 1 and goes up to 10, but it decrements or decreases by negative 1. So if it starts at 1 and it decreases by 1, it's going to go down to 0, then negative 1, etc. And it will never get to 10. So in reality, we have numbers in the from, the to, and the by, and those are correct, but we really should have flip-flopped the from and the to. So it's so Excuse me. So it should say from 10 to 1 by negative 1 so that it could count down from 10. Here are a couple of tips for debugging. First thing um, you want to make sure you do when you're debugging is to change only one thing at a time. If you make too many changes, then you don't know which code you changed might be causing the error or which one might have fixed the error and if something generated a different error. Another key is to make sure that as you're programming, you test early so that you make sure you have a set of code that's working correctly, and then you can add um, you can add blocks and functionality to it incrementally and test only the new parts. You uh, could also add comments to your code so that it's easier to read or to help remind yourself what those blocks are supposed to be doing, and I'll show you how to do that on the next slide. You could also simplify your code with procedures. So if you're ending up with a whole bunch of blocks strung together, you might think about um, breaking that down into procedures and then just uh, putting the procedures together. You could also display the value of variables in labels or in pop-up boxes on the screen if you are um, getting invalid values for what you think should be in your variable. And then finally, another good technique is just to have another set of eyes take a look at the code. So don't bang your head too long against the keyboard. Have somebody else take a look at it and see if they can help you spot the error too. So here's how to add comments. You just want to right click on a block and you should see in the pop-up menu an add comment command. And when you do that, then you'll have the little blue circle with the uh, question mark in it and you'll have kind of like a speech bubble that comes out from it. In the speech bubble you can type in your text and then you can toggle the comment uh, to display or to hide by clicking that blue question mark circle. You'll notice in that uh, pop-up menu when you right click on blocks there's also a collapse block option. If you're starting to have a lot of blocks or procedures on your page and it's getting difficult to, th to scroll through your code and see all of it, you can collapse them so that you can see more of your code on the screen at once. And then once they're collapsed you could also right click on it and there'll be an expand block to, um, to expand it back to its full size. So you might be wondering where the term debugging come from. Well, it's popularly attributed, as far as, as, far as computer science goes, to uh, Navy Rear Admiral Grace Hopper when she was working on the Mark II computer at Harvard. They actually had a moth in the system, and she made a comment about debugging or removing the bugs from the system. And so the moth caused the program not to work. So an error, meaning it doesn't work, is a bug in the program and debugging is the process then of removing those errors.